Original versus Definitive, which version is better when completing Deconstruction? In this mission, Kendall barges in, telling us how upset she is, us being the big brother go out on a murderous rampage because our sister got butt hurt, we destroy some portables, while construction workers try and waste us, the foreman sees us and hides in his toilet, we push him into a hole, and we bury him in cement. We'll compare tasks, execution, speedrun tactics and gameplay. Both games are vanilla, played on PC, my name is Barry Info, so leave a like and subscribe for more comparison videos. Now let's see how Reconstruction compares between both versions. In the opening cutscene we see how Duane has a rag and wipes down a car. In the definitive however he has his hands inside the car for some reason, there's no rag and he's fisting the car? I believe this is because, as you see, the car in the original is closer to the ground. In the definitive, it's lifted up a bit. The definitive devs, being so lazy, did not move the way in a little bit higher so we can see the rack. As always, the garage looks beautiful with the sun rays coming through the roof in the original. We have some natural light as well. In the definitive, it's entirely closed off and we have no sun coming from anywhere even from the gate which is closed. The same gate is widely open in the original and at the end of the cutscene, CG is going towards it. In the definitive, he's going through a closed gate, which you know, it's fine, he can open it as he gets close. But tell me this, where the hell did Kendo come from? We see her approaching us from the garage entrance. Supposedly she was just at the construction site, since she just told us that she got some comments towards her appearance, so she just entered the garage. In the definitive since the door is closed, it implies that she was in the building the whole time, so did the construction crew call her on her cell? Then I don't know. What I do know is that Caesar in the definitive drew himself some tattoos with a marker. They don't look permanent at all as they do in the original. I do like how in the garage we have a lot more stuff in the definitive. At this point the guys have been here for a while so they should have some more tools, tires, spare parts and whatnot laying around. It seems a bit barren in the original. Alright, on to the mission itself. When you approach one of the workers he drops a random comment. Hey, this site is dangerous! This is still true for both versions. Hey, where's your hard hat? The portables in both versions are also very inconsistent when it comes to explosions. Sometimes they explode, sometimes they don't. No changes here. Taking them down with a bulldozer also doesn't seem to be any different. One good hit and they go down. Explosive barrels have not moved it seems. Both versions have them at the same place. Heck, even using the massive crane to bulldoze the portables still works in the definitive. What really surprised me is that the timer you get after starting your rampage is still the same in the definitive, you get 3 minutes in both versions. I expected a nerf like always but no, we didn't get one. After Foreman gets back into his toilet, you gotta push him into the hole. As you see for some reason there's a big white border around it. This sticks out so much because it's super symmetrical, in the original there's still a hole and nothing else. You can still see the edges of the border, sure, but they're properly textured. Speaking of this though, I gotta point out something. Before the mission starts, at this same location the hull is not visible. It's just not there in the original. However, you can still see the border. Well, my question is, which one looks more off? The weird border or the massive uncovered hull from the definitive? If your answer is the outline, since of course the there's gonna be a hole here because they're gonna work on it later. Let me correct you with this. Yeah, how the hell did this happen? You come across this spot very often before the mission starts. You'll see this all the time, why is it open? But at the same time, walkable. <laughs> so it's closed and open at the same time. I personally call it laziness, but the definitive defenders would call it revolutionary, I'm sure. Anyway, back on topic, the cement truck in the original has moving parts. The cement mixer is moving at all times because it's, you know, mixing cement. When you explode the truck, it stops moving because it's no longer mixing cement. In the definitive, it's still moving, but it's barely visible since it looks like it has an unfinished texture. There's no text and no dirt on it, but at least it still moves and that makes me happy. Also something else I noticed is how long it takes for a hole to be filled up. Filling it up in the definitive takes just slightly bit longer, making the unskippable cutscene longer as a result. Not a big deal, it's just a couple seconds and it's also just an observation. Ok, so this is it for mission, how is the speedrun? 
In the speedrun you usually use a mixture of a bulldozer and explosives, which works the same way for both versions. For the format, however, what you do is just place three satchels here, explode them from a distance and the pot pori flies into the hole. Always a great sight to see. Well, I'm so happy to say that this same thing works in the definitive as well. I'm also happy to say that every skippable cutscene from the original is also skippable in the definitive. It would have been nice to see this one also being skippable, but uh, you can't have everything I guess. So which version is better? Well, if I count the whole glitch we saw, I would say the original, but this glitch is only visible outside the mission and this series compares just the missions themselves. We only saw three weird oddities with Dwayne, the garage door and the hall border which are not really a big of a deal. Does this make the definitive worse in the mission? A little bit, but it really does not change the gameplay in any way. This is why I would say that both versions are pretty much the same. Do you think I should take a point away from the definitive because of the issues we discussed? Let me know in the comment section below, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, thank you for watching and a very special thank you to all lovely Cunning, Case Knights, Munish Pretty, Epsepple, The Epic Eleven, Sleep Game Studios, Shinte, Clint McCurley, Extreme Staff, Jacob Madley, Max Robinson, Unknown Stranger, Jim Francesco's and everybody else.